We've just started to learn about definite integrals in the Riemann sum. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can evaluate a definite integral without using the fundamental theorem of calculus, which we will not learn until section 4.4. The first way that we can evaluate a definite integral until we know the third way. The first way is using the limit definition. So this is what we have been working on. We have found delta x which is b minus a over n. In this case, it's 0 to 3, so 3 minus 0 over n, or 3 over n. And then we would find the end point that we would use. And again, using the right end point is always the easiest. And so that's going to be a plus i delta x, or 0 plus i times 3 over n which is 3i over n. So those are the two values that we would need. And then we could say the integral from 0 to 3 of 2x dx is the same as the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation as i goes from 1 to n of the function. So 2 not times x, but times 3i over n times delta x, which is 3 over n. Again, that would be the limit as n approaches infinity of, this would be 2 times 3 times 3, so 18i over n squared. Oops, forgot my summation. Summation as i goes from 1 to n of 18 i over n squared. Again, I can take out the 18i over n squared. I'm sorry, not the i, the 18 over n squared. And just bring it out to the front until uh, I have a chance to stick it back in there. And again, it's up to you whether or not you do that step. Um, but what that leaves me with on the inside is just i. And I'm going to get rid of that summation and replace i with n times n plus 1 over 2. So I've gotten rid of the summation. And now I'm going to bring that 18 over n squared back in. So this essentially is n squared plus n. And I'm taking that times, so I still have the limit as n approaches infinity. And I have 18 times well, this is going to turn into 1 and 9. So I have 9 times n squared over n squared, which is 9. And then I have 9 times n over n squared, which is 9 over n. And then, of course, finding the limit would give me 9 plus 0 or 9. So that's the first way to do it. So yes, I kind of went through that quickly, but it's what we have spent the last several videos going over. Now, you might have noticed that on my page, I have already graphed the function from 0 to 3 of 2x. And you might have even said, wow, that looks an awful lot like a triangle. And what if, since this is just telling me to find the area, what if I found the area of that triangle? So I could find the area of a triangle from 0 to 3 by taking the formula for the area of a triangle, which is 1 half base, which is 3, times height, which is 6. So 1 half times 3 times 6 is 1 half of 18, which is 9. So those are our two ways until we learn the fundamental theorem of calculus. Our two ways are using the limit definition, which can be very lengthy, or if our curve happens to be a geometric shape that we know how to find the area of, then we can use that geometric formula. Here are three questions for you to try using a geometric formula. I purposely did not graph these ahead of time so that you had to sort of think about what the picture would look like or what shape it would make. So for the first one, feel free to pause and work ahead of me. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. For the first one, again, we're going from 1 to 3. So from 1 to 3. 
and we're doing 4x. So 4x means that I'm going up 4 over 1. So at 1, the value of my function would be 4. Oops. So at 1, the value of my function would be 4. And at 3, the value of my function would be 12. So all the way up to, we'll just pretend that's 12. And so my picture is going to look like this. So it's between 1 and 3. And then, of course, the actual graph continues, but we only care about the part from 1 to 3. So this is a trapezoid. And if you don't know how to find the area of a trapezoid, that's okay. You're going to learn it right now. The area of a trapezoid is 1 half times the height times the sum of the bases. So in a trapezoid, the height is going to be at a right angle, and the bases are going to be the two sides that are parallel. So this base would be 4, this base would be 12, and the height would be 2. So to find this area, I would take 1 half times 2, which is the height, times the sum of the bases, 4 plus 12. So 1 half times 2 is obviously 1, 4 plus 12 is 16. And that's my final solution. For my second picture, I have from 0 to 3 of x plus 2. So again, 0 to 3. And then x plus 2 means I'm starting at 2. Oh, sorry. Starting at 2 here. And then I'm using a slope of 1. Um, so a slope of 1 means up 1 over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. So I'm only caring about this particular figure. Um, again, this is a trapezoid, so I can do the trapezoid. Now, some people don't love trapezoids, so they would split this into a rectangle and a triangle, and that is just fine. You do you. I'm going to use this um, trapezoid yet again. So I'm going to say this is 1 half times the height. So the height would be from 0 to 3, so 3, times the sum of the bases. This base is 2, and this base is 3, 4, 5. So again, that's all I would have to do is just do the math. So 1 half times 3 is 1.5, or 3 halves. We'll keep it in fractions. Uh, and then times 7, so that gives me 21 halves or 10.5. For the last one, I have the square root of 4 minus x squared. So this one might not be immediately obvious to you, so you might want to break out Desmos. But essentially what we're going to have is from negative 2 to 2, we're going to have a half circle with a radius of 2. So it's basically centered here because if I wrote this as y, uh, y squared, sorry, let's try this, y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared. So y squared is equal to 4 minus x squared, and this is x squared plus y squared equals 4, and that is a circle. That is the equation of a circle centered at 0 with a radius of 2. So again, how would I find the area? I would say, well, this is half of a circle, and to find a circle, I take pi r squared. So I'm just going to take half of pi r squared. So 1 half times pi times 2 squared, which is going to give me 1 half times 4, or 2 pi. And it's okay to leave pi in your expression. You have five properties that we want to go over together before we do just a little bit more practice. Most of them are very um, self-explanatory, so we're not going to spend a ton of time on them. The first one says, if f is defined at x equals a, then the integral from a to a of f of x dx is 0. And if you think about the integral in terms of area, this makes perfect sense. If I'm finding the area of nothing, I'm going to get an area of 0. For 2, if f is integrable on a, b, where a is less than b, then if I need to find the integral from b to a, so pay attention to this. I'm not a detail person, 
um, that this is something you always have to look for. If your values are going in the wrong order, because A should always be less than B. So if they're in the wrong order, then the way to fix that is to change it to a negative value and then switch the limits of integration back to the order that they should be um, least to greatest. For three, if F is integrable on the three closed intervals determined by A, B, and C, then if I want to find the integral from A to C, I can do that by finding the integral from A to B plus the integral from B to C. So it's basically saying, let's say you have something that's split into two distinct shapes and I wanted to find it from A to C, but this value is B. I could use the formula for the area of the triangle here and the formula for the area of the circle here and add those together. And this would obviously be a quarter circle. Uh, four, if F is integrable on A, B, and K is a constant, then just like everything else that we've studied, you can always bring a constant out to the front. And five, if F and G are integrable on A, B, then if I'm finding the integral from A to B of two separate functions, it's okay to split that into the integral of each of those separate functions to make your computations easier. So we're not going to do a practice of every single one of those properties. You'll see them come up as we are working, but I did want to do one last practice with you using geometric formulas and a couple of those properties. So for instance, if I'm doing question one, so all of this is f of x. If I'm finding the integral from one to four, so from one to four means I'm finding any area here. So within that box, it appears that I have a quarter of a circle and I have a trapezoid. So this is using that property that says it's okay to split it into the integral from one to two of f of x plus the integral from two to four of f of x because I can find each of those differently. Um, there should be d of x, dx in there so that I'm integrating with respect to x. So from one to two, that would be the area of a trapezoid, which is one half times the height of one uh, times the sum of the bases, which is one and two. And then the area of the quarter circle would be one fourth times pi times a radius of two squared. So simplifying, this is one half times one times three. So this is three halves and this is one fourth times two squared, which is four. So one fourth times four is one. So it's just three halves plus pi. And I'm going to leave it just like that. I don't need uh, to get any crazier than that. All right, next question. Same thing, we're going from two to negative two. So this is one of those where, hey, look, I gave it to you in the wrong order, so pay attention. So I'm going to have to find the negative integral from negative two to two of f of x dx. So from negative two to positive two, and then I'm going to negate it. So from negative two to zero, we can see I have a triangle. So I'm going to put negative on the outside. Now we haven't talked about this part yet, but do you notice that this is in fact below the X axis? So technically we cannot use um, our Riemann sums and all of that because it's not non-negative. But what we can do is say, okay, well, it's just going to be a negative area. So this area below X is negative and then one half base times height. So one half, two times two. And that would give me that area. And then from one, from zero to two, because remember I'm trying to go from negative two to positive two. So from zero to two would be a positive one half two times two. Now I can see that negative one half two times two is going to be negative two and positive one half two times two is going to be positive two. So really this is negative zero, which doesn't make sense. So the area is zero. Now that again should make sense because if I look at those two triangles, I can see that this negative area would cancel out with that positive area. And for the last one, I just gave you the area of the entire 
thing. So you figure out how you see it best. I'm going to say that all of this, um, let's use red, all of this is a parallelogram. And I'm going to find the area of a parallelogram, which is base times height. And base and height have to be perpendicular. So my base is one, two, three, four. My height is one, two. So two times four. And that is going to be negative because it's below the line. And then for the blue section, I'm going to have a triangle that is one half times base times height. And I'm also going to have a quarter circle that is one fourth times uh, pi times r squared. And then I'm just going to simplify. So this gives me negative eight. This gives me two. And this gives me pi. So my final solution is negative six plus pi. On this last question, I want you to do your best on your own. This is really a question of, do you know how to use the properties correctly? Um, and then just substitute in values that they've given you. So press pause, do the best you can on this question. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So I'm just gonna kind of color code these so that we understand exactly what's going on. Uh, let's see, yellow and green, there's a green. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to evaluate the integral from one to three of negative x squared plus four x minus three dx. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to break it into whatever I can use using these values above. So I know that the integral from one to three, oh, I'm gonna use yellow for that. So the integral from one to three of x squared dx is something that I know, but I need negative x squared, so I'm just gonna stick a negative out front. And then I've got plus, now I need the integral from one to three. Now, this is wrong. This is the wrong order of integration that goes from three to one. So I'm just going to rewrite this as the integral from one to three of x dx as positive four. So I'm going to write then four times the integral of x dx. So I'm taking the four and moving it to the outside and integrating x. And then I'm going to subtract three. And then this is just going to be the integral of dx, the integral from one to three. I think I forgot my one to three over here as well. So now all I'm going to do is replace Anything that I've written in a color, this four should have really been out here in white. So anything I've written in a color, I'm going to replace it with what it's equal to. So 26 thirds is equivalent to this entire expression. So 26 thirds. This expression, the integral from one to three of x dx is positive four, whoops, didn't switch colors, so positive four. And then the integral of dx from one to three is two. So this is my expression, and then I'm just going to simplify. So negative 26 thirds plus 16 minus six, so really this is negative 26 thirds, 16 minus six is 10, and 10 is the same as 30 thirds. And so now I have negative 26 plus 30 is four thirds. So I can find that area without knowing yet the fundamental theorem of calculus and just using the values given to me. Up next, you guessed it, we are finally going to learn the fundamental theorem of calculus.